Hello, my name is Celito Rodriguez and the title of my presentation is Cross-Cultural Management and Organizational Performance, a Content Analysis Perspective. Agenda. Purpose. Here I will briefly explain the goal of this presentation. Research Abstract. I will briefly explain what the research is about and my presentation is basically about uh, that research. What is Contact Analysis Design? I will briefly explain what Contact Analysis Design is so that we can correlate then uh, the Contact Analysis in general and whether content analysis was uh, followed in this research. Content analysis design elements. Here I will briefly explain the elements of content analysis. Content analysis guide. Uh, here I will talk about uh, a practical guide to content analysis. Critique to the design of the selected paper. Uh, here I will give uh, my opinion about the design of the paper that I chose. A statistics of the study. I will briefly explain about the uh, statistics of, of this research paper. Suggestions as to improve the study and its reporting. Um, I will give some suggestions again as to uh, improve uh, this study. Um, it is important to say that this is a, a very good research, a very good study, and I don't know if there's anything that I could say to improve it, but anyway, I will try. And finally, we will go um, a summary of what we have covered. Purpose. The goal of this presentation is to critique, uh, comment, and make recommendations as to um, recommendations to one of the sample papers from the uh, content analysis reader. The sample paper that I chose is titled uh, "Cross-Cultural Management and Organizational uh, Performance: A Content Analysis Perspective," which is also the title uh, of this presentation. What is this research about? Um, globalization offshore outsourcing, global value chain, and global division of labor have led today's business firms to internationalize their activities. So this research is uh, about those things, about uh, cultural diversity and globalization. Um, cultural diversity has become an important issue in managing the contemporary worldwide uh, workplaces. It is a necessity for managers to take this challenge by fully utilizing the potential capabilities of multicultural workforce in order to achieve organizational effectiveness. So, in a nutshell, uh, this research paper uh, tries to, to answer the question, uh, you know whether there is a relationship or not between cultural diver diversity and organizational effectiveness, and and, and the answer is yes. And um, so I will uh, talk about the research and, and what they did, and um, things that we could do to maybe improve the research. Although I have to say that this was a a, a very good research and there may not be many things that I can say to improve it. Now before we go into um, the research itself and how it was conducted, uh, I think that it is important to understand the logic of content analysis design. So here are some of the key elements that we must consider. Uh, first of all, analysts must explain clearly uh, what they have done. Um, in a content, in a research using content analysis, it is extremely important that uh, uh, there's no uh, hidden agenda and that uh, analysts explained uh, all the steps and procedures th that they followed. They must be able to replicate the research. Research design follows a network of procedures. Uh, we're going to 
we tried to find out whether those procedures were followed. Uh, procedural step must be efficient, no redundant work. Um, favoring one outcome over another must be prevented. Uh, there shouldn't be any hidden agenda. This is very important, uh, important in the logic of content analysis design. And it, it enables analysts to account for how the research was conducted. So, um, you know, having this in mind, when we look at this research paper, we try to figure out whether this uh, um, logic uh, was followed. Content analysis design elements. Uh, so here are the, uh, the elements of content analysis. Unitizing, which basically means relying on uh, definitions of relevant units. Uh, sampling uh, means relying on uh, sampling plans. Recording and coding, which is relying on uh, coding instructions. Reducing data to manageable representations, uh, which basically means, you know, uh, reducing the data, uh, re basically relying on, on established statistical techniques or, or other methods for uh, summarizing or simplifying the data, uh, given the fact that when you do content analysis, you, you are faced with a huge amount of data. So, um, uh, by reducing this data to uh, manageable representations, you're able to uh, to do the content analysis in a more uh, efficient manner. Uh, it would be impossible to try to analyze uh, the, the given material for many topics when you try to do content analysis. Uh, adaptively uh, inferring conceptual uh, phenomena, uh, basically this means relying on, on established uh, analytical constructs or uh, presumed models of the chosen text uh, as, as warrants a and finally narrating the answer to the research question uh, which basically means relying on uh, narrative traditions or, or discursive uh, conventions established within the discipline of the uh, content analyst. So th these are the elements of, co of uh, uh, content analysis design that uh, must be followed or it, uh, but, uh, when you are doing a, a research paper and in this case the research paper that we are analyzing um, we are going to try to determine whether these elements uh, were followed Besides those elements that we just talked about, um, it, the a practical guy in context analysis, uh, well, first of all, some of the um, uh, important items over here are formulating research questions. You cannot do content analysis w without first formulating research questions, um, ascertaining a stable correlations locating relevant text. Again, this is very important. Uh, depending on the topic that you are uh, trying to analyze, I mean, nowadays there's so much written data um, because of the explosion of the internet and all the digital content out there, uh, you have to, uh, you know, be very careful uh, when you locate relevant data. Also, um, the sources of that data. Uh, you have to be careful on, on where you get your uh, facts from. Defining and identifying relevant units in text. Sampling these units of text. We, we talked about that. Uh, developing coding uh, characteristics and recording instructions. Selecting an analytical procedure. Adopting the standards and allocating resources. So, uh, in, in a practical guide to content analysis, these are elements that must be um, uh, taken into consideration. Critique to the design of the selected paper. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, it was really difficult to, um, uh, to look at things. I mean, this was a, a, a very well conducted research. Um, now, I, I had a, uh, have a couple of questions. Uh, so, in this research paper, 
um, the researchers use um, 30 papers, 30 scientific papers to conduct this research about um, cultural diversity uh, and uh, organizational effectiveness. And I was intrigued as to know why 30 papers. Um, I mean, th this study was done several years ago. Uh, we know that the literature on this subject has grown considerably, but it, it was not clear to me why 30 was the magic number over here. So I think that uh, it would be important to know. Uh, also, the, the research, I think, that could be improved by integrating the process of analyzing the role of the stakeholders uh, in this thing. So I think that even though this content analysis was done on this research paper, but um, interviewing people that work in big companies, um, people that have to do, uh, managers who have to deal with uh, cultural diversity, in my opinion, I think that this would be a very important uh, ingredient to a research like this. Um, also, um, including articles that talk about integrated government policies or organizational agreements to promote cultural diversity. Uh, they did not, I, I'm not sure they did that, but um, it would be very interesting what is the, the, the policies in some government and if there are any uh, international agreements or, or not about the, the promotion of cultural diversity. I, I do know, for example, that um, th there are some governments that give incentives to company if they hire a lot of local people. But, but again, so I think that uh, including that piece in the uh, research paper would be very important. Um, and again, I, I work for a big uh, a company myself and uh, we actually promote uh, cultural diversity. We have people from all over the world. So uh, to me, this is a very uh, common topic because I see this every day. People, uh, sometimes I'm in, in, in a meeting with people in Asia, in Germany, in South America, you know, different time zone, different languages and different accents and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the literature on this topic has grown considerably and it continues to grow. So it would be interesting to know if this research uh, would uh, yield the same result if it was conducted uh, today. Now, the statistics of the study, uh, again, they, they chose um, uh, 30 scientific papers. It would be interesting to know why only 30 or, uh, you know, whether that was uh, a good sample. Um, the, the papers were divided into three analysts, 10 papers per analyst, and they uh, broke everything into five key dimensions of cultural diversity, uh, creativity, innovation, image, and marketing, higher productivity and, and competencies. Uh, it would also, uh, it, it was not very clear to me why uh, these five key dimensions uh, were chosen, but uh, uh, I, nevertheless, I think that this was a very uh, nice written piece. So, um, suggestion. Well, again, uh, very tough to find anything over here since this was such a great work. But uh, anyway, so I think that explaining why they chose those 30 papers uh, would be important. Um, and again, uh, as I talked, um, integrating the uh, stakeholders, uh, uh, people that work in, in big companies, interviewing those people, that would be important to find out uh, some uh, important uh, items. Um, and um, it would be important in this article to find out if government policies or international agreements uh, are used to promote cultural diversity. And, and again, uh, the, the literature on this subject has grown considerably, so a follow-up on a paper like this would be important uh, to find out if um, the same results they got, they would have gotten it today. Uh, all right, so what have we covered? So we discussed the purpose of this presentation. Uh, we gave a brief explanation to uh, on the research. We talked about what content analysis design was. 
uh, talked a little bit about content analysis design elements. Um, we introduced the topic of you know content analysis guide. Uh, some critique to the design of the selected paper was given. Uh, talked a little bit about the statistics of the study, and uh, I also gave some suggestions as to improve the study and its reporting. And um, with that, we uh, conclude this presentation. Thank you for watching, and I hope that uh, it has been informative.